Okay, we're going into the ASI here, and we're gonna do a little picture of. Uh, we're gonna get do a little run on this. I'm gonna hit the button and hit play. To watch this thing. I'm actually bringing up an umbrella so I can cover the uh, telescope from any glare off the moon off the corrector plate. Uh, I think. I think I think we have the dew removed. Let me let me hit the dew before I get going here. I think there's no dew on this thing. There's no dew. No dew. No dew. No dew. Okay, I got rid of the dew for now. I don't have a dew shield, so we're gonna wing it. Here we go. Bam! Here we go. We're gonna watch this, and I'll make some comments as we go. I've got the histogram. It's doing a recording now, and the histogram is set so we can see the histogram, and we're doing a live debayer. So we're seeing the color image from the ASI 1600 chip. This is the Orion Nebula. Uh, this is a rough uh, polar line. It's pretty good. I'm doing like up to 10 second exposures. There's a little bit of drift, small amount happening here. So the stars are pretty round, but uh, it could be better. I didn't do a really super precise polar line. It's a rough polar line. Uh, if I do a 30 second, my stars get a little bit elongated. So I'm doing up to 10 second exposures. I have a gain of 210. We have a little bit of sky is starting to glow a little bit. Uh, I think the sun rises in about an hour. We're going to start to see twilight, a little bit of twilight, but there's also a moon out. I have an umbrella right now I'm holding to kind of keep any glow off the corrector plate from the moon. Just in case I go to stretch it, I don't want any shadows on my corrector plate since I don't have a dew cover on it. And uh, I covered the neighbor's light. Their, their yard light, which is shining on the corrector plate also. Some of my early exposures have corrector plate, uh, some part of the corrector plate is glowing, so sometimes that, at least with the Rasa, that would give me these weird effects sometimes if I go to stretch the image or stack them, and you see these weird uh, light things that would happen for low lights hitting, if you're going at low targets, hitting the corrector plate. That's an issue with uh, SCT telescopes or uh, Max Sudoff or whatever. You got to keep the corrector plate from getting too lit up. It's, it's just to be in the dark. One nice thing about an observatory with a, a classical observatory is the corrector plate issue. You don't run into that problem. I think my neighbors, a visitor or somebody, oh, they're dropping off. Uh, neighbors are dropping off their kids early in the morning. So, uh, but the light from their headlights is from the other side. So that's what we're doing here. As you can see, we got an auto stretch going on. I'm getting images on the iPad. I'm getting them streamed to the iPad, but I'm not taking images onto the iPad. The images are going to be on the chip. So that's what's happening right now. We're doing a little bit of a live uh, recording of Orion Nebula. Just a little test shot, a little test goofing around. And I can stack this stuff later. I'll have a pretty good shot of Orion Nebula with this. I can reach in here and take the stretch and uh, make it a little bit overall darker by taking the center thing and going out and all the exposures will appear to be darker. See that? So, you know, there's there's room. You can see my white. I, I can actually see the stars more in the different exposures, depending on how much you want to stretch it. So you can stretch it accordingly. Uh, do some HDR processing with these three different exposures and get some interesting looks out of the uh, stack. Anyway. Or stack the, the short exposures, maybe just get a whole bunch of short exposures and stack them to get more uh, more uh, signal. We have no. Uh, I'm using an Edge HD, the C8 Edge HD with the F7 uh, focal length. So the focal length is 1400 millimeters with a. Uh, ASI 3200, so it's 1400 divided by 50 times 0.6, I think, 1.6. So that's the power, you know, the, uh, the size of the amplification that's of the uh, image that we're getting on the plate here. I try to do plate solving. If you try to do plate solving, uh, it will not solve the plate <laughs> for the Orion Nebula. For whatever reason, I don't know why. You can't pick it up for... Although I had the wrong focal length when I did the plate solve. I should have put it at 1400, I had it at 1300. But it couldn't plate solve. I've had it this happen before, and it, you think it could figure out, well, this is the, 
the Orion Nebula, but it's looking for stars, I guess. There's too much glow from the nebula. I don't know. Maybe if, maybe if I made it a short exposure, it would plate solve. I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. I'm really not concerned about the plate solving. I just tested. I wanted to test it. We're done now. So what I'm going to do is uh, go back in, uh, change the exposure to, for the one second down a bit. I'm going to make that a half a second. I got to do the reset just for the heck of it. Say yes and go in. And I'll make this a half a second exposure. See this? I'm clicking a half second. Say OK. It tells me how much space it's going to take. About 900 gig megs, and it'll take two minutes and three seconds. And so now I can go back, and we'll do another run here. Let me verify with my iPad here. I'm not going to um, set flashlight on. Uh, there's a little bit of, not much, a little bit of uh, dust and dirt and looks like I could almost correct my, clean my corrector plate a little bit. Set, set flashlight off. I might hit it with some more uh, dew busting here from the... Try to clean it with a blow dryer. Anyways, that's it for now. I want to try another quick run here, and I would I'd be the moon today, but there's some clouds actually now. There's clouds and haze, so we're actually shooting through thin clouds and haze. I can see it over the moon. There's quite a bit of haze, so we're probably shooting through haze here. We'll do another run just for the heck of it, but this is going to be hazy. So, and it's gonna it's shifting a bit, as you can see. My tracking isn't 100% accurate here. So we take this next picture, we'll see how much it shifts in this amount of time. Yeah, see that it shifted down a bit? So there you have it. Anyway, that's the gist of it. I'm going to get out of this right now and uh, stop the recording. Well, and before I do that, I'm going to come back in real quick and I'll show you how you could just turn off the whole screen and just see the images. So I just tap that, turned off the screen, we can see the whole images, of the full the full image that I'm getting. I can also pinch and zoom in, look at that, I can look at what I'm doing, what I'm getting, a closer view, by doing a pinch and zoom in and out. Pretty cool, if I tap again, it'll bring up the screen. I can see the histogram, I can turn off the histogram, I can see the debayer. Watch what happens when I turn off the debayer. It goes to black and white mode, and actually, if I zoomed in, I'm going to zoom in a bit. Yeah, it's not that bad. It looks pretty smooth right now. I don't know. It didn't look that smooth there. There you go. You can see with the oversaturation, you can see some weird, you can see like sometimes sensor data. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Well, see, you can see like a little bit of a, you can see the Bayer matrix a little bit more. I think the debayer, when you turn it off, I got a feeling that the black and white, I don't know, maybe it, it might be less resolution, I don't know, than black and white compared to color. I don't know, we'll see. Let me zoom in a bit, bring it, bring it up and see what happens. It's not that bad, it looks pretty smooth. Sometimes you get these weird, maybe it's a, a skill artifact or something. Look at that. I can hit the auto on each one. Pretty cool. Oh, look at that. I brought it out. I didn't stretch it right. There you go. Look at that. So, kind of cool. You can play around, look at it. Different looks. See what you're getting at different uh, stretching. 
capabilities. Turn it back on color. And uh, we'll go for the, the next exposure to get a little bit more detail here. There you go. Pretty cool. Some nice stuff to stack, play around with, toy with a bit. Looks like the Orion Nebula should be maybe, it would be nice if I hit it more to the left a little bit and higher maybe. I'm not going to play with it while I'm getting the capture. They're just test images anyways. Kind of fun stuff to toy with. Maybe I'll shoot it at F10 next time or something. But not today, not today. And I don't have... This mount isn't tracking perfect very well. I don't have like a... I didn't do a polar line. It's hard to do a polar line with a wedge. A really good polar line with a wedge. So, I don't know. There might be a way to... I need to auto guide. But, uh... I don't have a piggyback scope for auto guiding right now. So we'll test that out another time. Maybe I should order that Amazon Prime it or something. Yeah, I don't like the bottom. The bottom of this is the nebula is kind of getting cut off here at the bottom. It's getting low. I'm sinking. Should have reset it. But I could always stop it. We're almost done anyway. So it's a fun session, fun time. A little bit of morning time looking at the Ryan Nebula. I wanted to see it. Pretty cool. Pretty happy with it. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, there's some haze around the moon. So that's going to affect our Orion Nebula. It's going to affect it. Yeah, it's going to affect our um, quality of the image a bit. We have a little bit of cloud action. Maybe more haze, more haze from the clouds, you know. But uh, pretty happy with it, you know. And what I like about this is, okay, so I could take like a screenshot, right? Kind of like. We're doing HDR right here, right? So I go out, I can take a screenshot. Watch this. I'm going to take a screenshot. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a screenshot. And this is the last image I took, right? So I'll take a quick screenshot just for my iPad, just like to get a quick rough idea on the iPad. So I took one. Now I'm going to, I'm going to go back in. And I'm, going to, I'm going to change. It would be kind of cool to do this in the post, but I could do this on an iPad with another program. I'm going to go in. I'm going to change the stretch a bit, right? So I'll make it darker. So now it's darker, right? And I'll turn it off. And I'll take another screenshot, right? So it's almost like for HDR like processing, if I had an HDR program on the iPad, I'll stretch it way out now more. It's like it's making the exposure even darker, right? So I'm seeing more, less nebulosity. So now I've taken three kind of stretched images, samples of different stretched images, right? If I wanted to the centered where it would, should be, you know, but now I can make it really bright, right? So I'll go way over here and make it really bright. Really whiten out and blow out the nebula and stuff, watch. Let's get it really bright. So this is really bright now, right? So I'm going to hit, hit again. All right, so I've got like th three or four different exposures, all from one exposure, because it's just how I'm treating the histogram. All right, pretty crazy. Turn off the debugger for a minute. Look at that. So, you know, I don't know. Do you see difference? I don't know. See much difference there? That's a question. Pretty well. Let's go to auto. See what it does by auto. This is what it, this is what it gives me for auto. This is what it thinks is a good auto uh, stretch here. That's what it thinks it's getting for the auto stretch. So there you go. Anyway, pretty cool, eh? Off wirelessly from the iPad with the ASI Air app. So I'm gonna record. Stop recording now.